people of Los Angeles who will spend those dollars and recycle them here on our main streets. We'll have 12 new gates, and two of these gates will be able to accommodate the big Group 6 aircraft, the Airbus A380s and the Boeing 747-800s. Our flight information display systems will have features that allow customized directions to your gate once you scan your boarding pass. Our automated boarding gates will have biometric identification such as facial geometry, iris scan, and fingerprints. We're building a baggage optimization project alongside the MSC. The facility is also designed to be eco-friendly. They're meeting the highest Tier 1 standards in sustainable construction practices according to the California Green Building Standards Code. Midfield Satellite Concourse will be serving both domestic and international flights. This is a win for Los Angeles. It's a win for our tourism industry. It's a win for every person who walks through these doors as a gateway to the rest of the world. Believe it or not, officials are anticipating the new Midfield Satellite Concourse to be open and operating by 2019. Reporting from LAX, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Airport officials say construction of the Midfield Satellite Concourse should not interrupt operations and schedules at other terminals. LA's Chinatown has a gateway, so does historic Filipino town, and soon Little Armenia will have one too. But selecting the winning design is proving to be difficult, giving all the talented submissions. Gilrea shows us the final five. Folks in East Hollywood choose wisely. It's now down to five finalists, but only one can be chosen for this distinct honor welcoming people to East Hollywood's Little Armenia. It's been part of um, the dream of the community to have something representing uh, the Armenian heritage and culture and our contributions and our accomplishments and our involvement and our presence in this community and, it's, and we're very excited about it. One of these will become the official gateway to LA's Little Armenia, a section of East Hollywood that includes Barnsdall Art Park, Hollyhock House, and the St. Garibed Armenian Apostolic Church. The gateway to be installed at the area's entrance at Hollywood Boulevard and Van Ness, next to the 101 freeway. L.A. is home to one of the largest Armenian-American populations in the country. We asked Area Councilman Mitch O'Farrell which design's his favorite. I'm going to choose not to weigh in on my personal preference because I want the community process to guide uh, the way forward on what is ultimately selected. So personally, what do you like the most? I can't say. I love them all. <laughs> We want to make sure that this has widespread community participation and, and uh, uh, engagement because ultimately this is part of the gift of the city and so it's the residents who get to truly be able to weigh in on this. The winning design is expected to be put in place in about a year. From LA's Little Armenia, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The city has set aside $350,000 to cover expenses for the winning project. The money comes from the city's arts development fee, a trust fund for the arts revived in 2014 by Councilman Mitchell Farrell. Well, once a month on a Thursday night, Angelino art lovers converge on the downtown arts district for a smorgasbord of art. Recently, the centerpiece of the art walk took on a decidedly female twist. Anna Marcos takes in the show. A huge art show, and this one is all female. The downtown Los Angeles Art Walk has become a monthly cultural phenomenon, and this month, the Her Story exhibit takes a look at life and all things artistic from the female point of view. I wanted to mix kind of the inclusion of abstraction in with it, so that's why their faces all kind of look scratched out. You know, they have these puddles of paint on the top. We are oftentimes um, looked over or ignored, so it's really nice to be spotlighted and given a platform to tell our story. Portraits, abstracts, landscapes, and symbolic work are all part of the mix. This time I'm going to do a live art performance, which include me paint showcasing my calligraphy and the paint on five different models with different genders and nationalities. But calligraphy and abstract headless portraits are just some of the many attractions. Art lovers can visit other galleries, buy things at the Art Mart and local businesses, 
take a break at the food trucks, and just get a taste of the downtown L.A. art experience. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. For more information, visit WeLikeLA.com. A historic Hollywood mansion gives way to showcasing some of L.A.'s finest decorators. Rasha Goel has more on how this estate is representing Hollywood history. A classic example of old meets new. Rooms designed with an eclectic array of styles are on display as part of the 2017 Waddles Mansion Designer Showcase. This year's theme, Hollywood History, the New Classics. Each room is, is in a specific design and has interesting facets and highlights different designers. The 1908 built mansion was the original home to Gurdon Waddles, a famous financier who was responsible for bankrolling much of early Hollywood. After Waddles' death in 1932, his wife and son continued to live on the property. The mansion was sold to the city of L.A. in 1965 and currently houses a Hollywood historical organization. What makes it so special and unique is its situation in Los Angeles here, just on the foot of the Hollywood Hills, um, among so many uh, iconic and historic homes. I'm in Mr. Waddle's favorite room, the library. Now, he spent a lot of time here. In fact, family time was also spent in here. And though the designer has chosen to bring some contemporary feel and looks to this room now, the family tells me it's still one of their favorite rooms. Be sure to see the library. That was our family's favorite room. And we all think it's the prettiest room in the house. What, what came to mind for you to want to, you know, mix the old and the new together? How did you go about working this? Well, actually, that's one of my fortes. I like to marry the old and the new together. So the library has the bookcases original to the house, 1908, and so is the ceiling. So I brought in contemporary furniture, contemporary lighting, contemporary accessories, and marry the two together. Not only is it about the inside of the home, but designers also help style the exteriors. Leslie Shapiro Royale talks about one of the pieces that served as an inspiration for her. I had the opportunity to meet some of the Waddles uh, relatives last year and was told how much Gurdon Waddles loved gardens, birds, life, all of that. And I thought the significance of me finding a sculpture with the little bird is just too good. And I fell in love with her and really sort of designed the room around her. Well, every room has its unique character where they're trying to uh, respect the uh, Waddles Mansion while infusing their vision. The Waddles Mansion is considered a park and the parkland area surrounding it are normally open to the public. In addition, it can be rented out for events. In Hollywood, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. The Waddles Mansion Showcase runs until April 16th. For more, visit waddlesshowcase.com. While heading over to downtown L.A., where the city's oldest children's theater is set for major renovations. But first, a puppet carnival to welcome a new era for this downtown fixture. Gil Reyes has more from Bob Baker Days. <laughs> Handcrafted marionettes come to life to celebrate the life and legacy of their creator, Bob Baker. He passed away three years ago, but in lieu of his passing, we uh, decided to keep the theater going. And in his spirit and his artistry, we continue everything that he uh, he built here. Welcome to Bob Baker Days, a puppet-themed carnival at Bob Baker Marionette Theater in downtown. Built in 1963, it's the oldest puppet theater in the United States. People celebrating all weekend on what would have been Bob Baker's birthday. He always wanted to make sure that the kids who grew up in this neighborhood always had access to some sort of art, uh, function, and, and outreach program. The theater produces 200 marionette shows a year. And this marks the venue's first event as a non-profit organization. I, I, I just love it. I love it. I love so much that you guys are non-profit now. Sending it to hospitals. Yeah. That's right. Getting it out there. I love yeah. getting people that necessarily wouldn't think to come here to see shows. Just getting the word out. I just want you guys to make so much money so that you never go away. I didn't know that I had been here for 50 years. Um, so my daughter, she's, uh, she's still getting used to it. I think it's a little bit of a... An adjustment for her, but she really likes the puppets and uh, looking forward to coming back again in the future. 
The latest plans are to turn the property into a residential development complex while still preserving the theater. The theater is an L.A. historic cultural landmark. This designation protects it from demolition, no strings attached. At First and Glendale in downtown, I'm Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. Renovations are expected to begin by the end of the year. While construction is taking place, puppet shows are expected to continue in other venues throughout L.A. A city leaders approve a major renovation plan for downtown L.A. Plans to fill up the Silver Lake Reservoir are moving faster than expected. And the city attorney targets immigration consultants who prey on local families. All these stories in City Beat. The Los Angeles City Council approved a plan to tear down Parker Center, the LAPD's former headquarters, and replace it with an office building for city workers as part of a larger redevelopment plan for the Civic Center area. The Civic Center master plan calls for the construction of 1.2 million square feet of office space, mostly through developments proposed for the Parker Center site and the nearby Los Angeles Mall, a retail area below street level. The master plan also includes 32,000 square feet for cultural space and 45,000 square feet for a new Civic Plaza, which will be built in six phases over the next 15 years, with the Parker Center site as Phase 1. Last month, the City Council voted against naming Parker Center a historic cultural monument, despite the Cultural Heritage Commission recommending the move. LADWP officials confirmed that surplus water from the snowpack runoff from the eastern Sierra region will be made available to refill Silver Lake Reservoir ahead of schedule. Utilizing this water source, the refill of Silver Lake Reservoir will begin in mid-April and take approximately two months. This option replaces the originally planned May refill of the reservoir using local water resources that would have taken approximately 12 months. LADWP emptied Silver Lake Reservoir in late 2015 to allow for the construction of the Silver Lake Reservoir Complex Bypass Project, part of LADWP's compliance efforts to address updated state and federal drinking water quality regulations. City Attorney Mike Fuhrer announced a multi-agency collaboration to educate the public on immigration consultants and to crack down on those who misrepresent the services they may provide under the law. As part of this effort, the city attorney supports legislation proposed by City Councilwoman Nuri Martinez to establish a permitting and enforcement system for immigration consultants. Martinez said requiring immigration consultants to be licensed will provide a resource of legitimate consultants for people to access and give the city the tools necessary to prevent more people from being victimized. Support a group of young actors as they perform their student-written play at La Plaza de la Raza, enjoy a film festival from Indian filmmakers, and learn how to live green during an Earth Day celebration. All this and this week's Things to Do. For the first time in About Productions history comes the debut of a full-length student-written play, Eyewitness. A story of courage and hope inspired by the lives of significant Chicano elders told through the voices of today's youth. Produced as part of the Chicano Legacy Project, which aims to enrich the public's knowledge of the rich history of the 60s and 70s Chicano movement and provide youth with a transformative educational experience, in the play these main characters are guided by the jaguar, a spirit animal, as they search for purpose and gain the courage to stand and effect change. Come watch the play on April 8th at 2 p.m. at Lincoln Park. For more information, visit aboutpd.org. The Indian Film Festival of Los Angeles is a nonprofit organization devoted to a greater appreciation of Indian cinema and culture by showcasing films, supporting emerging filmmakers, and promoting the diverse perspectives of the Indian culture. Each year, the festival features a rich mix of film programs designed to build and support the growing interest in the Indian entertainment industry. This includes programming that cultivates an audience for Indian films while supporting filmmakers of Indian descent in career development as they navigate the larger studio system in Hollywood. The Indian Film Festival takes place April 5th through the 9th at Regal LA Live. For more, visit IndianFilmFestival.org. Come out and celebrate Earth Day with a fun family celebration at the Tarzana Recreation Center. 
There'll be lots of family-friendly activities, live music, local food vendors and trucks, and kids painting. You'll also get a few tips on how to live green. It all takes place on Saturday, April 8th at 5655 Van Alden Avenue in Tarzana. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week. the stupid hat. Come here. Closer. No parking! Do you know what happens when you park illegally on these narrow hillside streets? You block the street so emergency vehicles can't pass. Each year, homes are destroyed and lives are lost because of drivers like you who park illegally! And you know what else? You can get a citation! And you can be towed! Help us get to the emergency. The life we save just might be yours. How'd you know? The ball called. <laughs> hey, look out for the pothole. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm an Iyengar yoga teacher here in Los Angeles. And you're watching LA City View. Channel 35, Our City, Our Channel. Namaste. Because of the color of their hair, they better involve. We begin with an eyewitness news exclusive disturbing video of a gay man being beaten in Queens. The individual was attacked uh, uh, simply for his, his orientation, and uh, we're just not going to follow it. The word hate is just unexcusable. It's a word that shouldn't be used, and to hate somebody for the color of their skin is just not right. It creates fear among all of the community members. I think it's wrong how people discriminate against others just because of the way they prefer people, as in gays or just their skin color. 
it's wrong, and something needs to be done. A hate crime is any criminal act directed against a person based on the victim's actual or perceived nationality, religion, sexual orientation, disability, gender, and especially...
are, the more chances they are going to come back to that area. Don't let our town be that area. One simple precaution. Good morning. Good morning, all. Today is Wednesday, April 5th. I want to welcome you to your Los Angeles City Council. This council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, the public is welcome. Mr. Clerk, we do have a quorum. Would you call a roll? Blumenfield, Bonnabus, Can El Cedillo, Englander, Harris, Dawson, Rizar, Carras, Kukwain, Martinez, and Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson. Ten members present in a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. First order of business. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Krikorian moves. Uh, Mr. Englander seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Price moves and Mr. Wezar seconds. Continue. Mr. President, there is a request from the Department of Building and Safety to receive and file items 1B, 1D, 1M, 1N, 1O, 1S, and 1U in as much as the liens have been paid in full. Further, the department also recommends that items 1G and 1Q be reduced to $1,129.62 and $100 respectively due to partial payment. And finally, to continue items 1E and 1R to May 5th. Okay, so without objection, so ordered, continue. Mr. President, that brings us to item number one. It's an item notice for a public hearing. Do you have cards? Yes, sir, cards. Okay, let's continue through the agenda. Very good, sir. That brings us to items two through 23. There are items for which public hearings have been held. A committee report for item two has been posted and circulated for council's consideration. Item 22 is a matter that may recess to closed session. Council should hold it on the desk for the time being and consider it separately later. And lastly, uh, there is a request to hold item seven on the desk. Okay, we can do that. In fact, did we get a request on 23 as well? We should hold that. Very, Mr. Very. Koretz? Mr. Koretz? Uh, if I could have item uh, five called special. Item five for Mr. Koretz. Any other specials members? Okay, then let us... Uh, vote on the remaining items let's open the roll close the roll and tabulate the vote 13 eyes okay continue very good sir items 24 through 41 are items for which public hearings have not been held 10 votes are required for consideration okay thank you then without objection those items are now before this body, do we have cards? Yes, sir. Cards on items 24, 32, 33, 34, 35, 37, 38, 39, 40, and 41. Okay, let's hold those items and vote on the remaining items. And I was just informed that item 34 needs to be continued for two weeks till April 19th. Okay, so let's vote on the remaining. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 eyes. Okay, that brings us where? Mr. President, uh, would council like to take presentations at this time? Let me check. Mr. Weezer, would you be ready to proceed with your? And if the answer is yes, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and uh, good morning, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to be here today to present to Council Chambers the Make a Wish of Greater Los Angeles, an organization that has done so much for our city. Make a Wish Greater Los Angeles was founded in 1983, and we are celebrating the 34th year anniversary this year. Make a Wish grants wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions by bringing hope strength, 
and joy to their lives through granting their wish. I want to welcome Neil Adam, who President and CEO of Make-A-Wish LA, and Susan Kolb, current chair of the LA Make-A-Wish Board, as well as their team members and volunteers. We will hear from them shortly, but first I wanted to talk a little bit about Make-A-Wish. Make-A-Wish's mission is to serve the community by granting over 350 wishes annually. That's almost a wish a day to eligible children throughout Los Angeles County. Make-A-Wish grants four types of wishes totally from the child's perspective, and they are, one, I wish to have something special. I wish to go on a great adventure, for example. I wish to meet their heroes, for example. I wish to be anything they can imagine. <clears throat> Through granting their wish, Make-A-Wish positively impacts the child's health and recovery. 99% of parents report that the WISH experience gave their children increased feelings of happiness. And 89% of healthcare professionals said they believe the WISH experience can positively influence WISH kids' physical health and well-being. And my wife, Rochelle, and I can truly attest to that. As some of you know, our youngest daughter, Aviana, was diagnosed with leukemia three years ago. Thankfully, she has since recovered, defeated cancer, and is now living a normal, healthy life. And that's great news to give a round of great. applause you, on Mr. that. President. My family and I are eternally grateful to make a wish because their efforts Shh. in granting Excuse me, Mr. Wiesel, wish. wait a minute. Thank you. Shh. Can I have it quiet in here, please? Go ahead, Mr. Wiesel. Thank you, Mr. President. My family and I are eternally grateful to make a wish because their efforts in granting Aviana's wish brought hope, strength, and joy to our daughter and to our entire family. As you might imagine, fighting an illness like cancer takes a huge toll on a child. It can also be a very difficult experience for the parents and family. And make a wish goal is really simple. They pull children away from their illness and all the true unpleasantness that it entails, and they just provide a child the greatest form of pure joy imaginable. Also, to add to that, Make-A-Wish is not only turning 34 this year, in just two, week, two weeks, they will also be celebrating their 10th annual Walk for Wishes, where walkers from across Los Angeles County will join Wish Kids and their families, along with friends, donors, and sponsors, to celebrate the thousands of wishes that have been granted locally through the years and raise funds to grant even more wishes. And now to talk a little bit more about this great organization, please welcome Neil Atton, President and CEO, who can share some remarks about Make-A-Wish. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Wizar, Mr. President, and members of the City Council, I'm humbled and honored to uh, be here today and to accept uh, a proclamation on behalf of Make-A-Wish Foundation of Greater Los Angeles and the nearly 9,500 kids and families we have touched in a deeply personal way during our 34 years in L.A. County. I'm joined today by our board chair, Suzanne Kolb, our vice chair, Bo Pearl, members of the L.A. chapter team, and two of our dedicated volunteers. As uh, Council Member Huizar said, our mission is very clear. We grant wishes to L.A. kids with life-threatening medical conditions bringing strength, hope, and key ingredients of recovery to them and to their families during those very difficult journeys. Being joined today by representatives of our community of over 500 volunteers means a lot to us, as they are the often unsung heroes, the face and helping hands of Make-A-Wish to families as we discover kids' heartfelt wishes, reveal in magical ways that they are being granted, and even sending them off and welcoming them back as new ambassadors of our mission. Wishes are nothing short of game changers for these kids. They inspire, they carry families, they breed optimism. Health professionals report observable improvement in the well-being after a wish. The vast majority of kids describe their wishes as pivotal in their recovery. Between the wonder of modern medicine and the power of a wish, nearly three in four of our wish kids today live through adulthood. This year, our chapter will grant 350 wishes, nearly one a day, to LA children. Yet, over 800 LA kids will be diagnosed with life-threatening illnesses in that same time frame. So we have far to go. 
We rely on the financial support of individuals, businesses, and private foundations, as well as the dedication of volunteers. So community outreach really is our lifeblood. That's where uh, those of you here can help by advocating on our behalf in your districts. As the council member said, we're uh, hosting our walk, our 10th annual Walk for Wishes at the LA Coliseum. Beside a pleasant walk on a beautiful morning, we'll be having a community celebration of our wish families and our supporters right on the field at the Coliseum. We've given each of you uh, a star necklace at your desk, uh, which, will, which bears the smile of one of our wish kids. All participants will be wearing one on April 22nd to remind them of why we walk. So we invite you to join us for some fun, music, games, and all around magic. Please reach out to your communities and encourage folks to come walk, raise money, and join our celebration. Councilman Wiesar, thank you again to you. You, your daughter Aviana, and your families are, uh, your whole family are dear to us. We look forward to you and the, uh, your and the council's support as we strive to reach every eligible child in Los Angeles and bring hope, strength, and joy to their recovery. So thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, this organization provides a life-changing experience for many young boys and girls who are going through some very difficult times. It's always great to see the happiness that this organization brings these kids at some of the most difficult moments. And uh, an organization like this is not only helping the city of LA continue to move forward and making sure all its residents uh, get the services they need, but an organization like this is truly saving lives as that life-saving wish they grant uh, oftentimes leads to a child's recovery and also not only leads to the child's recovery but also helps the family heal from that as my family can attest. So with that, I'd love to uh, grant this resolution to make a wish for the wonderful work they do here in the city of Los Angeles and let you know that we, the city council and the city of LA are behind your efforts. Congratulations on your 34th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mr. President, you're very good at doing this, but you always, uh, when we need to uh, make a pitch, you're one of the best pitch people I know. So I'm making a pitch now, and if I could ask if you could help me as well, Mr. President. You see, Make-A-Wish relies on volunteers to do a lot of its work. And they, one of the greatest challenges right now is that over 60% of the children they serve are Latino and many of their parents are Spanish speaking only. So if you have any events in your communities, whether they're Latino or not, they rely on volunteers, particularly for the Latino community, please uh, invite them to your events, to your uh, community events, get the word out. Uh, we can always look them up. Let me read the, uh, uh, the website for those people watching on channel 35, www.la.wish.org, uh, to help them get volunteers and help them do their work. Thank you very much. Thank well, you, Mr. Mr. Wiesar, you already sold me, so you're a good pitch person yourself. <laughs> you. So what I would just think off the top of my head that uh, someone from your office should coordinate, every council office should put that on its website, all of us should do a Facebook uh, uh, post or Twitter or something, why don't we at least start uh, with that? Uh, like I said, I'm sold. Uh, good thing it didn't cost me anything, because you're, <laughs> you're a good salesman. Let's give them one more round of applause. Good. Thank you very much. Mr. Blumenfield, are you ready for your presentation? Uh, colleagues, Mr. President, I am proud to have with me today members of Labor 411 to acknowledge Ethical Consumer Day. Now, I know what you all are thinking right now. You're a little confused because Ethical Consumer Day is usually on April 11th, <laughs> and we're celebrating it here today. So why are we doing that? I get that. That's a reason to be confused. We're doing that because council was in recess then, so now is the time that we can celebrate, and I think it's ethical and appropriate to do so. 
So what do we do on Ethical Consumer Day? Today, on Ethical Consumer Day, we acknowledge a strong middle class, socially responsible businesses, and labor unions. Labor unions, as we all know, are responsible for helping to empower and enlarge our middle class, ensuring members have good jobs, a living wage, and workplace protections. Labor unions have continuously fought for basic human rights to protect hardworking Americans from negligent working environments. Strong middle class has been and is the backbone of this country. Unions not only protect the workers, but they offer their families a chance to live uh, happy, productive, and healthy lives. When families benefit, communities benefit, and we ensure a robust economy for the entire country. Economic inequality hurts everyone, and in a world of growing globalization and growing inequality, sadly, it's more important than ever that we protect the workers' right to organize. Socially responsible businesses support union workers at all stages in their career. Socially responsible jobs are in high public demand, and it's important to recognize organizations and businesses that support union labor. Now, just like you can't judge a book by its cover, you can't always tell whether a, a, a particular business, you can't judge a business by its logo. You don't necessarily know whether that business that you're going to is socially responsible and treats its workers fairly and allows them to unionize. However, there's a, there's a solution for that. And you're looking at some of the folks here who have come up with that solution. Organizations such as uh, Labor 411 publish lists of union businesses and ease the connection between consumers and union-made products and services. And so that's why we're here. Let's hear it for Labor 411 and the celebration of Ethical Consumer Day. Yay! All right. Thank you. So I'm going to give you guys this certificate. And again, I know it's confusing because it's not April 11th, but we're celebrating today. Uh, so please accept this small token of appreciation on behalf of the entire council. Mr. President, there's been a request to continue item 1L to May 5th. Okay, without objection. Let's do Mr. Walsh. Mr. Walsh, John Walsh, 1A, B, 24, 32, 33, 35, 37, 39. Mr. Walsh, followed by Mr. Previn. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or J. Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Number one, building and safety. You do a good job in building and safety. I've lived here since 76, and before that I lived here briefly in 66. So I've been around here a long time. And that's not this kind of white guy. That's another kind of white guy. Okay, number 24. 24, and that is uh, lighting. You do an excellent job. Once you got rid of those carbon arc lights, once you got rid of them, everything fell into place. Number 32, uh, this is a, a REAP, Rent Escrow Account Program. You do a good job on that. I hate to say this, you know, but I, I have to give you credit. Number 33, this is a, a public property infrastructure uh, DWP, uh, this is a local emergency by the mayor. Uh, there's no local emergency at the aqueduct. That's BS. This is about 
making work. 34, and number 34 is uh, local regional transportation and transit needs. You do a terrible job on transportation. Number 39. This is the most um, uh, this is the most important item up here. Protecting and ensuring safety at municipal buildings. This is bullshit. You want now, when somebody gets up here and refuses to uh, get, uh, get off, you want to arrest them for criminal trespass. And that you extend this to all the buildings. You know, I don't mind. You're all liberals and you all bite Trump on the ass, but you're even more fascist than Trump, and no one is more fascist than Rue, who claims he's a liberal. We do not need an ordinance for public safety and access rules, including proprietary departments. They may be deemed a trespass. So if you go into a building, if a cop in the building says you're breaking the rules and you ask what, he can arrest you and put you in jail. That's your liberalism. You know, if it's, if it's a, a black rapist, you cry over them. You cry over them. But when it's a white person or an Hispanic person who gets up and speaks like this, Mr. all you want to do is off put topic. us in prison. Okay. We don't need any more trespass rules. Roll them four times and shove them up your fucking fascist ass. You, your general public comment? Okay, number one, no Olympics. You know, my great-grandfather came here from Switzerland because his father wanted him to become a priest. And you know what my, my great-grandfather said? I like pussy. I don't like altar boy cock. I'm, gonna I'm, I'm leaving this country. And he left the country and came here. That's what you, uh, that's why you can cl uh, claim that I'm the trouble, that Switzerland has caused a lot of trouble. You know, if they vote for Switzerland, if Switzerland votes for us, they give us one billion dollars. The mayor tried, went to Switzerland to flirt with the commission and wiggle his little uh, gay ass and wasn't able to, uh, to get anyone in Switzerland to vote. Uh, for, uh, for, for we are going to win, and Switzerland is the best country in the world. Thank you. Okay, and before Mr. Uh, Previn comes forward, let's vote on item 23. Let's vote on item 23. So, uh, clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 12 eyes. Okay, now let's move forward. Mr. Previn, if I could get uh, on my board, Mr. Previn's. What was 23, sir? Was hold on one second, Mr. Previn. Is that the immigration one? Mr. Previn, sure. hold on one second. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, I don't second. want you to multi -check. I need, okay, so Mr. Previn, you have items 1, A, B, C, E, K, M, and U. You have items 32, Items 37, 39, 40, and 41. Go ahead. Right, and uh, 34, you continued, right? That is the uh, Governor Brown's transportation initiative. Just right. uh, okay. the items. So are item, and 14, obviously, you've got multiple bids, but those were already heard in committee, to be clear. Business improvement districts. Mr. Uh, okay, I just on the that items that I indicated you could speak on. Fair please. enough, sir. Your system allows you to sign up for them, so it is confusing to just, ordinary no, animals. Mr. That's Previn. Fine. Let's move forward. On Let's move issue. forward on point, sir. I agree. Uh, item 33, the mayor, obviously, last week to, uh, made a little announcement about the emergency Mr. status. President, which Mr. We're Previn forward. didn't sign what? up for item 33. What are you talking about? I, well, then my mistake. I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking at a list. 34 is, you continue, 37 is the L.A. beautification. Thank you. Los Angeles beautification uh, is formerly Hollywood beautification. Where's Rue? Is he uh, around? I can't scan him now. In any event, these guys are treasured partners, obviously. Uh, there are 501c3, Sharon Romano. Krikorian knows them well. The Athens Services uh, gag in which they, they provided unallocated funds to this group 
but didn't specify how many unallocated funds. And they were very, very helpful for NBC Universal, for Englander, Knobby, and Allen. And sir, as you know, Arnie Berghoff is also a supporter of, of that 501c3. Uh, and of course, multiple lobbyist activities. And what they're doing here, if I'm not mistaken, is just putting in 24 plants. So uh, you can't really quibble with that. But they aggregate a lot. They went from Hollywood to Los Angeles so that a lot of 501c3 work done in communities is now done by one big provider. So you, sir, uh, and the team can control who gets what. You know, maybe they're efficient. I like the idea of bringing in youth to help out, certainly. Uh, I don't know. I, I find that those associations are problematic, despite my love of Platinus acerifolia plants. Item number 39, sir, where you're going to hear about a lot, obviously. This is your effort to make illegal um, various activities. If you break a rule, you'll be found trespassing in City Hall. Now, you, sir, uh, break more rules than almost anyone I know, so I don't know if that's going to apply to everyone. For example, is smoking on the uh, veranda permissible, or will that be a trespass? If somebody is caught, like Englander, I caught once having a quick... Uh, I don't know. I find these rules... We should not be focusing on providing the opposite of incentives to come and participate in local government. We should be inviting people. We don't have, I know you think we have a problem, but I think that you need to be corrected on that one, sir. Uh, item number 40, we have the group once again investigating the minimization of the Aliso Canyon project. Well, that's all these uh, welcome, certainly. And 41, you have another reward for 50,000 bucks. So here comes the LA Times to pick up 1,800. And I don't know that we have a great track record, but we have to do what we have to do. You ought to stand up and talk about the details in this room. You ought to talk about about it, you ought to tweet that, not just the, and by the way, where is Weezar? He is a great man. Uh, thank you for getting those kids up here. Uh, well, make a wish. We didn't bring any kids today, but, but we will uh, another time. And now, sir, I'm going to move over to the Can uh, we give him his this, general, general minute for general public comment? This is a tough one because uh, when you hammer at something repeatedly, it hurts. Vision Zero uh, is intended, you know, in Sweden, in the original conception, uh, it was a beautiful idea. Uh, we've looked into it now, and of course it is less beautiful than, uh, than many of us uh, can tolerate. Uh, this, this group, uh, transportation alternatives, whatever, uh, you know, they're doing some fishy stuff, sir. The, if uh, you have a death in L.A. In the, in the road, if it's a bicyclist, it counts times three. So there's a waiting problem. And the other thing is that by talking, as they did the L.A. Times, about the increase in uh, accidents and deaths and so on and so forth, they fail to mention that a lot of that may be a result of bicyclists riding in dangerous areas. And whereas I love to ride a bike, I'm a young, vital guy, but there are older people, there are families, there are loads of people who are going to be cited by bond and lowering things from 35 to 30. And it's not helping in New York. It's not helping anywhere. So I beg you, sir, do the work of a diligent municipal leader and look at the real data. Don't buy the spin. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Okay, if I could have Mr. Herman on the screen. Mr. Herman, you have items 1, A, 30, 8, 39, 40, and 41. Yes, Mr. Bonnet. Well, who's coming up? I'd just like to make an acknowledgement. We uh, have here uh, in the first couple of rows here uh, the uh, LAX Coastal Chamber of Commerce's Leadership Academy. They come here uh, every year. They spend uh, several months every year uh, learning about leadership skills in the city of Los Angeles. They're here today. They've uh, visited ATSAC, I believe, this morning. They're meeting with uh, Ron Galpert and myself and Rich, Rich Llewellyn a little bit le uh, later today. Uh, and this is part of uh, the culmination of their, their, uh, their, their program, and it's always good to have them here. Look forward to meeting with you a little later. Okay, welcome. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you all for coming. Okay, Mr. Herman, items 1A, 38, 39, 40, and 41. Well, I'm here in regards to hearing and protests and objections to the proposed lien for nuisance abatement costs that extremely impact the community of the hardship. I object to the non-compliance of code <laughs> <laughs> violates them continuously and annually by their annual inspection process towards individuals with disability and more so because people don't know how to come here and protest against liens that are inappropriate and a violation of your constitutional right to appeal. As for Brian Hoff, H-A-U-F-F, H-A-U-F-F -F at 213-252-3926. Now I'm going into item number 39 regarding Wesson Englander relative to protecting 
ensuring safety of municipal building facilities. Well, we the public object. We object because you're in violation of our constitutional right to free speech and expression. Nowhere does it say that Judge Dean Perguson, for the record, indicated that what we say is offensive or my expression is offensive and you wish to kick me out because I'm waving my hands because I'm disabled. See? See, you can't do that. You can't interrupt the speaker under the Ralph M. Brown Act 54954 relative to protecting and ensuring safety of municipal building facilities. So if I come in dressed by expression, that's my dress. I'm a nigger with attitude. Now going to item number 40, Aliso Canyon. Where's the Dibble Dwarf? Why has any participated in action against the Aliso Canyon? Because like you heard in the news regarding gases, people dying from gases, and being exhausted by relative determination of feasibility and minimizing and eliminating the use of Aliso Canyon gas storage? Well, let me tell you something, brother. Listen, rookie. Listen, I've been on this topic regarding requests for Los Angeles Department of Water and Power to speak partially against the proposal. And yes, rookie, public accountability. Just because I'm disabled does not mean I, a ratepayer, have to advocate for the provisions of my safety and the community, rookie. Are you listening, rookie? Leave Star Taker, whatever his name, the hell out of the subject. Then the city attorney to seek party status as part of the CPU-02 relative to Aliso Canyon gas storage. Well, I got one opinion for all of you. Shut it down. Shut it down. Let's give him his minute for general public comment. So here you go. Here we go. Let's read it for item number 39. An actual disruption means an actual disruption. It does not mean constructive dis 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 disruption, technical risk disposition, and virtual disposition. Nuke pro to nuke. No, 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 no. Let me go back. It says N U N C P R O T N T no T U N C fool. See, the city cannot define disruption so as to include non disruption to the invoke of the aid regarding the Norwalk Supreme Court case. Then again, Judge Ferguson continues his analyst by quoting the 2013 Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals decision of Costa versus the city of Costa Mesa, which a speaker may be may not be removed from a meeting solely because thank of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, thank you. Thank you. Okay, can we go to general public comment? If I could get uh, Robert Alexander, Antonio Ramirez, Yvonne Michelle Autry. Uh, yes, sir. Good morning to your staff and yourself, uh, District Councilman Wesson. I'm Robert S. Alexander. I've lived since 1989 in 2027 South Victoria Avenue. I believe I'm a neighbor of yours. I've experienced uh, what I consider to be harassment and uh, targeting and general incompetence by the Building and Safety Department in respect to concerns they have about my property, my activity at my property, my hobby activity, non-business related at my property, and they continue to have issues with me specific to my full compliance with all situations and meetings I have had with Inspector Leo Milbauer, with Inspector Sean Ershbach, with an Inspector Ed Hill, and Inspector John Jagers. Now today, sir, is our first opportunity to see you in person, but over the past nine months, I've been to your offices. Thank you. So if I can have the next speaker, please come identify yourself. And we're also looking for a Rabia Sin. Thank you very much. Um, what numbers? I'm sorry. What? 
You're starting the clock and I haven't even been told of what numbers I'm going to be speaking on. This is general public comment. Okay, so could you start me on the clock, please? We did start. We no, her, no, her, you, no, I'm not going to debate you. Give her a minute. Thank you. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, again, this is regarding the homeless uh, law-abiding citizens living in these uh, duplex homes run by the scumbag um, Chu Wong, Pastor Chu Wong and Grace Pam and Flores Acuchie, and um, stop the homeless racketeering by these bogus Christian pastors. Um, again, the people that have been inciting these crimes at this one particular home is the home manager. Um, Jessica and Robin Taylor, Ebony Berries, and um, and Yolanda Jackson. These individuals are harassing homeless individuals. Um, this is predominantly blacks. All the whites that were harassed are no longer there. The whites have left. So they have had enough of Jessica, the house manager, and all the blacks ambushing them, stealing, attacking them, tweaking out, and harassing, harassing, and harassing them at all times. Stop this bogus shelters. Thank, Thank you. you. Transitional Thank homes. You. Thank you. So if I could get Miss Autry and Miss uh, Sin and then somebody uh, that has filled out their card, Trump. Yes, I, I'd like to speak. I suppose that was relative to item number 39. I think, you know, we endure your presentations as lengthy as they are. I think that you should give us and afford that opportunity to express any dissension or any grievances that what we have that we bring before you and not threatening to imprison us. We have a constitutional right. We have a right to organize. We have a right to publish and express ourselves. You already limit us to one minute. And I also had requested to speak on 39. Uh, I request um, now, especially with this conservative government, that more funds are not just allocated to the homeless, but as a black woman, I'd like reparations, yes, 40 acres and a mule, not in the form of a prison bed, a rape, sacrificial ritual, um, gun, bullet to the head, and not in the form of a, tenant on skid, a tent on Skid Row or San Pedro. So much money has been given to the immigrants, and that's wonderful, but what about black people, people that were our citizens? We're not Thank to be you. exterminated Thank on you. Skid Row. Thank you, Ms. Autry. If I could get the next speaker, if I could get the next speaker, Ms. Autry, please. It's now you're in, now it's, it's her turn. So let's be fair. Come on. Please identify yourself. Hi, um, um, I am um, a rabbi son with Esperanza Community Housing Corporation, and I'm also here as a 20-year advocate for immigrant survivors of domestic violence. I'm here because I want to express my concern about the carve-outs that have been added to the, um, to the eligibility requirements for the LA Justice Fund. I'm here because I, I want you to know, to please recognize that the crimes that you have carved out will in fact only hurt survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and trafficking. I could talk to you about different examples, um, examples where we know as advocates that the impact of trauma of domestic violence and control actually coerces a lot of survivors into things that they are then arrested for, such as prostitution, such as domestic violence, such as trafficking. And in the current climate, we are seeing more and more survivors refusing to come forth because of the sphere of deportation. So please, we urge you to please get rid of those carve-outs. Thank you. And to provide Thank you very much. Thank you. So that ends uh, the public comment, multiple and general public comment. Let's move on item five. Item five, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. And Mr. Alexander on item 1A. Yes, sir, if I can continue. Um, as uh, in regards to the citations I received specific to my property 2027 South Victoria Avenue, um, 
I brought uh, uh, all the documentation specific to this go round with building and safety. This was in 2000, this was in 2011, where agreements were made with the building and safety department that if I built six foot cedar fences uh, in, in, in line with the facade, the front of my house, that I would be left alone. Uh, given the citations and summonses and what have you that I've received of late, it seems that that agreement has been totally disregarded by building and safety. As well, the fence that was designed and agreed upon with Mr. Leo Milbauer uh, back in March. You know which what, I received uh, Mr. Alexander, this is what I'm going to do, is I remember being briefed about your issue last week. Great. So that we could get some more information on it. I'm going to continue your item to May 5th so that I can talk to the department and, uh, you know, try to gather all of the data. So from this point, your, there'll be no action on your item until May 5th. But if I may, sir, I'm going to be overseas as I am on a, on a regular basis for the past nine years. And I will be back in the United States the very end of June, beginning of July. So I must ask that we reconvene here. Or well, I'll I tell you what, let me, let, me, let, let me look into it and then we will, I will figure out the best way to proceed. Okay. okay. So at uh, this point, that item is continued until May 5th. All right. Let's. Uh, thank you, sir. And now we can vote on the remaining items that are listed in item one. Let's open the roll. Mr. Rue, before I... One Q, can we receive and file? One Q, let's mm -hmm. receive and file. Sure. Or Mr. Clerk, or what do we need to do? Mr. President, Council uh, previously reduced that lien amount to $100 uh, due to partial payment. Uh, would you like to further receive and file that $100 lien? Okay, so anyway, let's vote on the remaining. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Mr. Englander? Mr. President, at this point in time, at, at this point in time, would, would Council like to go to item 22? Item 22, it's a matter uh, that Council potentially could recess to close session on. Okay, Mr. Kikorian, I'm going to go ahead and ask you if you wanted to uh, go into closed session or open up. Any comments on this? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. The matter's been considered. Um, it's a uh, routine settlement and can be considered an open session unless members have questions or concerns. Okay, um, seeing no members on the queue, so there's no questions or concerns, we can go ahead and open the roll on that item. Mr. President, if I may, for item 22 in the case entitled Lucille Sanders et al. versus City of Los Angeles et al., there is a recommendation to satisfy judgment and expend $168,000 for attorney's fees plus applicable interest and $6,117.89 for costs plus applicable interest. Okay, then uh, we'll go ahead and open the roll on that item. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Property theft has spiked in the area over the past year. Mr. President, that brings us to item 32. Item 
32, sir. On 32, let's go ahead and take 32. If we can please uh, open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next item, please. Mr. President, that will bring us to item 33, item 35, and items 37 through 41. Again, that's 33, 35, and 37 through 41. Let's take one, uh, number 40 separately. I've got a uh, friendly amendment on that. So on the remaining items, so I'll hold 40. We'll go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. We can go ahead and take 40 now. Uh, colleagues, I do have a friendly amendment that I'll ask uh, Councilwoman Martinez to second, and that is on item 40, paragraph 5, the very last sentence should read, in this manner, comma, the best interest of the city and protections of all affected communities be maintained. I will accept your friendly amendment. Great. Excellent. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. So with that, colleagues, with those changes, we'll go ahead and uh, open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. And I want to thank all the department folks that were here on that item as well. So that is approved. Uh, next item, please. Mr. President, item 24 is ready to be voted on. Okay, let's go ahead and open the roll on item 24. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That's approved. Next item, please. Mr. President, that brings us to item number 7. There are two, a, excuse me, there is a majority report and a minority report before council in regards to the, pers uh, both from the Personnel and Animal Welfare Committee. All right, so um, with that, uh, colleagues, are we prepared to vote on that or does anybody want to make a comment? I don't see any speakers on the queue. I'm going to look for the Chair of Personnel. Mr. Kretz. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we discussed this item on uh, exempting three positions um, from the airport. Uh, one is uh, a deputy general manager, two, and two are airport uh, police chief assistants uh, or assistant police chiefs. Um, the, on on uh, a two-to-one vote, um, it, was, it was passed that all three of those would be exempted. Um, I objected to that, and uh, I believe that uh, there's justification for one position to be exempted. Um, I don't believe there's justification for the second assistant airport police chief position to be exempted. And, and here's the two duties, and it was argued that um, because of terrorism and other public safety concerns, that uh, both these positions are necessary. And I, I might agree with the first position. The first assistant airport police chief position will have a leadership role directing LAWA's airport police patrol, traffic, security, and investigative services, and support emergency operations provided to Los Angeles International Airport and Van Nuys Airport. Um, and this is from the, the letter from uh, the mayor. Um, the second assistant airport police chief position will be responsible for leading all of the budgetary training and development for civilians and newly hired police recruits and provide leadership over administrative activities. I don't believe that second position has, has the same level of public safety urgency and I believe that one could be hired through the civil service process. So uh, I would recommend uh, uh, the following as an alternative. Um, that we approve the mayor's recommendation to exempt one deputy general manager airports two position and one assistant airport police chief position. 
that we deny the mayor's recommendation to exempt one uh, ass assistant airport police chief, chief position, that we direct the personnel department to develop a civil service exam for the second airport assistant police chief position, and that for that position, um, that, that uh, for, and for the assistant airport police chief position that will be exempted, that we direct LAWA to add post-certification to the qualifications necessary to become a candidate for this exempt position. In addition, that we direct the personnel department to ensure that post-certification be included as a condition of employment when drafting up the assistant airport police chief class specification and that we direct the personnel department to report back in three months with a status report on the development of the civil service exam for the airport police chief position. And I'd like to ask for a second for that. And uh, uh, I think uh, it, it is a reasonable case that uh, the one position that clearly is focused on security um, is more urgent. I think the other one is very administrative and does not have the same level of urgency. So I would ask that uh, uh, both for the fact that uh, there have been a, a number of openings for, for these positions, and yet it's been 10 years since the last time someone was promoted from within, um, and that uh, uh, personnel believes this could be done in three to six months, um, and that uh, otherwise uh, we really make it almost impossible for people to promote from within and there be an appropriate career ladder. Uh, so I would ask uh, for your I vote on uh, this uh, alternative motion. Second. So Mr. President, um, council effectively has a minority report and there's been a recommendation to substitute that minority report for the majority report. That matter is now before you for a vote. I didn't have a vote on one because of two seconds. All righty. So the first yes. vote would be on whether to substitute the minority report and then subsequently a vote on the matter. Let's go ahead and open the roll, colleagues, on that. Close. Keep it open. Have Mr. Weston on that. Yes, okay. Uh, close the roll and tabulate the vote. Seven yes, six no. This was to substitute. Okay, so that does not. Okay, so uh, Mr. O'Farrell has a request to reconsider that vote. So we're going we're gonna to open the roll for reconsideration, close the roll, and tabulate the Oh, Mr. O'Farrell, you are a no? Okay. Okay, let's, you know what, um, unfortunately, and I'm getting another report now, that rather than reconsideration, we're actually going to re-vote uh, because not everybody was able to push their buttons, and I believe that it was actually, yeah, no, I believe that... Uh, Oh, there was a technical there was a technical glitch because some of the buttons were actually not working as what happened a couple weeks ago as well. So that's actually what's going to trigger the revote on this. All right, so we'll do that again for the substitution. We'll go ahead and open the roll. I'm going to wait till it actually opens before I close it. Close the roll. This is to substitute. This is to vote to substitute. So open the roll, the roll's open, I see that. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Four ayes, nine noes. Okay, so the substitution does not uh, pass. Now we'll go ahead and vote on the uh, minority report. No, I'd like to, no, no, sir. Before we, before we vote on the minority report, I'd like to offer an amendment to it. No. Majority report. The minority report has failed. The majority report majority is now report. before council. Right. right, and I'm offering a, an amendment to the majority report. Okay, your amendment? My amendment is uh, several fold. One, 
I move that the matter of the communication from the mayor relative to the exemption of the deputy general manager airport two and two assistant airport police for the LA airports pursuant to charter 101 B item number seven on today's council agenda be amended to instruct Los Angeles uh, World Airports and the Personnel Department to report on how to give appropriate preference to non-exempt airport police officers for future command positions inasmuch it is, is it important to provide professional development opportunities to officers who have already dedicated their careers to the city. Uh, also to authorize a new civil service captain's position that is non-exempt. Um, those are, that's the request. Okay, and uh, do you have that in writing? Or are you just going to circulate it? You, yeah. you, it's going to be an oral, an oral amendment, but if you can submit that to the clerk. So that's a first. Councilmember Rue seconds that motion. Okay, so that's a friendly amendment to the mi majority report. Now we'll go ahead and vote on the, ma on the majority report as amended. So we'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That passes. Okay, thank you very much. Next item, please. Mr. President, Council has motions for posting and referral. All right, consider those posted and referred. Um, Council members, do we have any announcements? Any announcements? Seeing none. Uh, looking for adjourning motions. Do we have any adjourning motions? Looking to my right. Seeing none. Looking to my left. Seeing none. That concludes the council meeting. We are adjourned. Be safe. Skeeter. I'm the CEO, founder, and president of Ultraglass. Ultraglass Inc. is an architectural designer and manufacturer of specialty glass. We're situated in Chatsworth in the city of Los Angeles. We're on over an acre with a 25,000 plus square foot facility. Glass has properties that people don't realize. It makes it so versatile, so durable, so functional. In terms of architecture, and art and engineering, glass is the perfect medium. We are really collaborators here. We work with a specifier, architect, designer, somebody who has a project to actually enhance their work. So it makes the space feel better, look better, and function better. We recently completed